Now let's go back to the model and instead of doing univariate, flip to multivariate. So what's going on here? Now we're in multivariate. This is where you would do a MANOVA. And again, what I'm going to do here is not going to do MANOVA justice. That You're not going to understand MANOVAs by what I show you here. I'm just literally showing you how to do this. Uh, but what we have here, and I'm just going to actually take all of these back out so you can kind of see what I did. But, you know, normally, when you think of it, you, you normally only have um, one dependent variable in a MANOVA. So I have all of these blood pressures. So baseline, systolic, and diastolic. I have the follow-up, systolic, and diastolic, and the change numbers. So I'm going to move all of those into my dependent. And then I'm going to use the region as my fixed factor. So it's flipping it. So you, instead of having uh, one dependent and multiple independent variables, I have multiple dependent and one independent variable. And I could even make this really complicated and do multiple fixed factors. And then I also have a covariate here. And again, you know, we have different options here of things to do. I want to display means uh, for region, compare main effects. I've got descriptives. I want to uh, estimate the effect size. And I normally want to have my homogeneity tests um, calculating there. So again, I click here. Let's PSS a moment. There we go. OK, so again, this is our MANOVA. Um, we have our different regions. We have our NCC. What it's going to do, there's going to be a lot of tables here. because So it's going to go through every variable You're doing descriptives. So systolic by region, diastolic by region, all the way down the line. We're going to get then to our multivariate. So what we want to know is, do we have a multi, a, mano, a significant MANOVA? So you're, what you're going to look for here is we have BP class and we have region, and you know we're uh, significant, you know, across the board here. There's different ways to do this. There's the Palais trace, the Wilkes lambda, lambda. I think those are the the two that are most commonly used. Um, in here, those you know the others. You know, again, you would have to refer, do some research, and refer to your methods, methodologist to really determine which one. But these are all looking at the significance of the MANOVA. You know, with my data set, my data set really isn't designed for these types of analyses, so probably gonna have some, kind of some funky looking things here. But again, you're going to have your between subjects, effects, and again, it's going to compare all of these different. Different vari the, all these different independent variables. And you can say, well, why wouldn't I just do, you know, a regular ANOVA, you know, individually on all of these? And you, you can do that. Um, this is this is kind of a way to, to do them all in one and kind of see, and there are some other reasons to, to do it that way as well. And you're just looking to see, you know, again, do you have an overall um, effect? And, and we can even do plots. In, in many of these cases to see what's to see what's going on and again if I had you know multiple variables I might look kind of like on my slides where you might actually find some main effects and interactions